Welcome back to Crux Stationalis. Today we find ourselves at the Basilica of St. Anastasia, or the Basilica di Sant'Anastasia. This basilica is the Roman station church for the Tuesday after the first Sunday of Lent. As we head inside, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like this video. The first church was built here in the early 4th century and was one of the original parish churches, the Tituli of Paleo-Christian Rome. It was the only one to have been situated at the ancient centers of power and pagan cult located at the Forum and on the Palatine. And so it remains at the foot of the Palatine Hill, snuggled away in its piazza, but not insignificant, for it bears the name of one of the saints in the Roman canon. The insertion of her name, Anastasia, into the Roman canon of the Mass towards the end of the 5th century shows that she then occupied a unique position among the saints publicly venerated at Rome. Thenceforth, the church on the Palatine is known as Titulus Sancte Anastasiae, and this martyr of Sirmium became the titular saint of the old 4th century basilica. Evidently, because of its position as titular church of the district, including the imperial dwellings on the Palatine, this church long maintained an eminent rank among the churches of Rome. Only two churches preceded it in honor, St. John Lateran, the mother church of Rome, and Santa Maria Maggiore. Both of those are station churches of this first week of Lent, St. John Lateran on the first Sunday of Lent, and Santa Maria Maggiore on Wednesday of the first week of Lent. The statue of Santa Anastasia in the niche in front of the high altar was planned by a sculptor called Francesco Aprile. It's very similar to that of the statue of Santa Cecilia by Stefano Maderno. Both the altarpiece of the Nativity and this fresco of Santa Anastasia in glory are by Lazaro Baldi. It is held in tradition that St. Jerome preached here in about the year 450 against the heresy of monophysitism. Condemned at the Council of Chalcedon, the Council profess the true faith that Christ is one divine person with two natures, both human and divine. The Church is subsequently mentioned in 499 in a surviving catalog of the Roman Synod held by Pope Symmachus as the Titulus Anastasiae. And then, in a 7th century pilgrim itinerary, we hear this title, Basilica que appellator Sancte Anastasiae, ubi cruce servantu que portantur per stationes. Fitting for this Roman station church itinerary, in English that's rendered, the basilica called Santa Anastasiae, where the crosses which are carried at the Lenten stations are kept. The commemoration of St. Anastasia in the second Mass on Christmas Day is the last remnant of the former prominence enjoyed by this saint and her church in the life of Christian Rome. Rome never misses a chance to integrate its ancient history, secular and pagan, triumphant and Christian. Here formerly stood a shrine marking the home of Romulus and Remus, where the she-wolf raised them, those same brothers who founded Rome in 753 BC. And so, on the site of Santa Anastasia, this memorial of the raising of a child who would come to found and rule Rome points to the much greater birth in man's history, of whose commemoration this saint points to in the church's calendar, Christmas Day. That is, the birth of the God-man, Jesus Christ, King of the universe. Thank you for joining us. I'll see you tomorrow.